Greetings, greetings, greetings and salutations, one and all. How you doing, how you doing, how you doing? It's a real talk right here on the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. Invite you to call a friend, tell a friend, friend of a friend. Enemies of your friends, friends of your enemies, and your enemies too. Come on, you, 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 and you. Boy, what a week it has been up to this point. Let's see if we can make it the rest of the way, huh? Ladies, it's either you in or you out. But this way talk him both way here up. Show me where you work in big dog bomb, but you want us to grow fit fit. Girlfriend, show me where you in or you out. But you ain't not the only one. Show me where you work in big dog bomb, but you want us to grow fit fit. Track called Show Me. Yeah, wait, but you ain't not the only one. The perfect mix. No, we ain't not the only one. We ain't not the only one. We ain't not the only one, girl. Sugar the bumper. We ain't not the only one. We ain't not the only one. We ain't not the only one, girl. Drop the bumper. Shit, the tinkers they like come pull up for you, push up. I want to wake up. Show me where you work in big dog bomb, but you want us to pour a fit fit girlfriend. Show me where you work in big, where you ain't not gonna know not to fit mix. Show me where you work in big dog bomb, but you want us to pour a fit fit girlfriend. Show me where you work in big, where you ain't not gonna know not to pour a fit mix. No, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, girl. Jiggly bumper, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, girl. Drop the bumper, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, girl. Jiggly bumper, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, girl. Drop the bumper. 630 on lock, I want you to see this one, what you want that? Girl, we ain't find a thing like you want, rock it off, I'm bumps by that, cause I love that girl uh. Show me where you work in, bit, that bomb, but you want us to pour a fit, fit, girlfriend Show me where you work in, bit, where you ain't not gonna know not to pour a fit, mix Show me where you work in, bit, that bomb, but you want us to pour a fit, fit, girlfriend Show me where you work in, bit, where you ain't not gonna know not to pour a fit, mix No, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, girl Jiggity bumper, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, we ain't not gonna know, girl Come on, girl, why not go down? Why not go down? Why not go down? Why not go down, girl? Drop the bumper. Shit, the tinkers they like come pull up for you, push up. I want to wake up. The things I'm doing that he won't do to you, girl. Find your thing that I find some girl. Show me where you work in bed. That bumper you want is the proof. I kinda like what I'm saying with that tune, you know? Go down, girl. Go down. Show me where you work in bed. That bumper you want is the proof. Show me where you work in bed. Where you ain't not gonna know the proof. The son of ill blaze. I said, listen. Girlfriend, just show me what you're working with. Just show me that thing, you know. Why not go down? Wanna officially welcome you each and every one to the broadcast. It's the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Real talk night. I want to say big ups to everybody locked in right now, those on TuneIn Radio on the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. Big ups to the affiliates. Come on, truly appreciate your love for you know. New Jersey representing NIE Radio. Motivator and of love. Show me where you work in it. The Foundation Radio Network, Clinton Lindsay.com out of South Florida. Big up to you. On Facebook Live representing. How are you doing? It's always a pleasure to see you guys. Big up to those who are watching on PEMG TV. CR7 Massive, no love. And of course, those that are locked in right here at the home of the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew, KevinStew.com. Where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. Hey, Julian. Oh, show me what you're working with. Good to see you, Julie. It's been a minute. You know you still have a spot over here, right? Especially on this night. What? Not the perfect mix. No, 
Julie. Don't don't wait on go down right now. No. I wanna make sure you can come back up. Why not go down, girl? Shake the bar bro. Why not go down? Why not go down? Why not go down, girl? Drop the bar bro. Shake the tinkers. I wanna say thank you to my segment sponsor. Pulsey Media Group and being in a moment is price. Let's get them a call. They can take care of everything you see right here on KevinStew.com and so much more. Friend, show me where you work here, bitch. Where you ain't not gonna know not the perfect mix. Show me where you work here, bitch. Now, Bob, you want is the perfect fit. We have a church service, a funeral, a wedding, a graduation, a party, a seminar, you name it. They got you. They have just what you need to broadcast your event live and in living color on a platform of your choice. Where you own it. You basically have your own internet TV station with them, you know. Give them a call 754-999-1140. At 754-999-1140 They take care of your videos, your photos Your streaming, your advertising Check them out, paulcmg.com Tell them DJ Kevin Stew sent you Is it Julie? No problem whining going down or up Wow Show me what you're working with. <laughs> Invite you to call a friend, tell a friend. Friends of your friends, friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends, and your enemies too. Share, share, share. Like, like, like. Those of you who know about the podcast, I hope you're subscribing, you know. Those of you who lock into the YouTube channel every now and then. And tell somebody about it But of course the place to be is KevinStew.com Come on over, jump into the stew pot It's what others call a chat room But because we're fancy We call it the stew pot It's where we keep things interactive and bubbling You don't need to sign up, register Give up your firstborn or your spleen Let's go to KevinStew.com and boom, you're there You can remain anonymous Or you can put your name so people know who it is that is interacting Of course you can call You can call, text, WhatsApp, Telegram 773-789-STEW Number easy to remember 773-789-STEW 773-789-7839 Alright, go on Julie Wind up Alright, so that's pretty much what we're talking about tonight. Showing sure you what we're working with for the most part. How you stay with your body language? Do you know what you do when you do it in certain situations? Let's say you really don't like someone and you're in their presence. Do you know how your body reacts? How do you react when you're in the presence of someone that you do like? Do you know the things that you do? Thanks to Ill Blaze track called Show Me for kicking off things tonight. All right, Julie, you can calm down now. All right, cool. <laughs> I know some people that are listening in that I don't know that they're listening in, but I know that they're listening in. You know, they don't they don't let it be known that they're locked in, but they're there. And I know they, they need to calm down now, too. Yeah, settle down, settle down. <laughs> All right, so... What do you do when you do it? Verywellmind.com says body language refers to the nonverbal signals that we use to communicate. According to experts, these nonverbal signals make up a huge part of daily communication. From our facial expression to our body movements, the things we don't say 
can still convey volumes of information. And I know some people that say a lot with their faces. I've been told that my face gives away a lot of things. Here's the problem I have. I don't know what my face is doing. <laughs> Understanding body language is important. But it is also essential to pay attention to other cues such as context. It has been suggested that body language may account for between 60 to 65 percent of all communication. All communication, not just some of it, you know, 60 to 65 percent of all types of communication conveyed by body language. Wow. In many cases, you should look at signals as a group rather than focus on a single action. And that's probably what gets people in trouble sometimes because they focus on a single action. So, what are some of the things to look for? Hmm. Well, facial expressions, you have your happiness, your confusion, your sadness, your surprise, your anger, your excitement. You know what those, those, those expressions look like? You know, the knitting of the brow when you're confused and the tears and the frown when you're sad and your eyebrows go into the back of your head when you're surprised and your face looking all crushed up when you're angry, that kind of a thing. Think for a moment about how much a person is able to convey with just a facial expression. A smile can indicate approval or happiness. A frown can signal disapproval or unhappiness. In some cases, our facial expressions may reveal our true feelings about a particular situation. While you say that you're feeling fine, look on your face. That tells people something else. So, I know some people when you ask them how they're doing and they say, fine. The tone with which you hear the fine, the look on the face with which you hear the fine, that you, you, you see when you hear the fine, means you need to leave that space. Not because you did something, but the mood that they're in, you're better off not being in their presence. So... You, you, you need to, pay, and this is probably where they talk about the other things. They, they, they taking it into context, looking at, at, at what it is that you're seeing. So, a few examples of emotions that can be expressed by way of facial expression would be happiness, sadness, anger, surprise, disgust, fear, confusion, excitement, desire. Co desire? Oh, that's the one where you're licking your lip, right? Yeah. <laughs> Contempt. The expression of a person on a person's face can even help determine if we trust or believe what the individual is saying. One study found that the most trustworthy facial expression involved a slight raise of the eyebrows and a slight smile. Now, this expression, the researchers suggested, conveys both friendliness and confidence. But I dare say it might suggest a little bit of being slick. You know, that person with the uh, slight smiles it kind of kind of sound like a used car salesman that's 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 the kind of image that i get from that and they say that person is trustworthy mm, i don't know maybe the used car salesman get a bad rap i don't know facial expressions are also among the most universal forms of body language the expression used to convey fear, anger, sadness, and happiness are similar all over the world. So, 
if you're talking to someone that speaks a language that you don't understand and you see a certain look on their face, chances are it's the same look you would have on your face if you are feeling the way that they're feeling at that time. Because the looks are universal. Emotion is universal. Researcher Paul Ekman has found support for the universality of a variety of facial expressions tied to particular emotions, including joy, anger, fear, surprise, and sadness. Research even suggests that we make judgments about people's intelligence based on their faces and their expressions. Now, why are you going to go as far as judging someone's intelligence by the way they look? I don't know. However, that seems to happen. One study found that individuals who had narrower faces and more prominent noses were more likely to be perceived as intelligent. In, in moments like these, you know, I kind of want to show off my nose a little bit. <laughs> the people with smiling, joyful expressions were also judged as being more intelligent than those with angry expressions. Now, why exactly? I, and I don't know if this is something psychological or just something that some people decide that, listen, we're going to run with this, you know. The people that, that, that smile a lot and are more joyful, are more intelligent because clearly they know something that we don't. And I, I'm guessing maybe they do. <laughs> or maybe they're just crazy, so they just smile all the time. <laughs> now, the eyes. Mm, the eyes. The eyes are frequently referred to as the windows to the soul. And since they are capable of revealing a great deal about what a person is feeling or thinking, that is why they give that, they have that, 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 that title to them. As you engage in conversation with another person, taking note of eye movements is a natural and important part of the communication process. Some common things you, might, you may notice include whether people are making direct eye contact or averting their gaze how much they are blinking or if their pupils are dilated. When evaluating body language, pay attention to some of these eye signals. You ready? You have your notebook out? All right. When a person looks directly into your eyes while having a conversation, it indicates that they are interested and paying attention. However, prolonged eye contact can actually feel threatening. So how exactly do you balance this? You want to be interested and paying attention, but you don't want to be threatening. So do you maintain eye contact with a smile on your face? Because then it could seem like you're just crazy. How exactly does that work? Now, on the flip side, breaking eye contact and frequently looking away might indicate that the person is distracted uncomfortable or trying to conceal their real feelings so if i'm hiding that i'm interested i look away but if i'm interested i look but while i'm looking i might it might seem that i'm threatening how oh lord Wear dark glasses. <laughs> uh, blinking is natural. But you should also pay attention to whether a person is blinking too much or too little. People often blink more rapidly when they're feeling distressed or uncomfortable. Infrequent blinking may indicate that a person is intentionally trying to control his or her eye movements. Does that mean that they're trying to control how they're feeling about the situation being in this moment at this particular time? 
one example given is that a poker player might blink less frequently because he is perf- purposely trying to appear ex- unexcited about the hand that was dealt. All right. So, there are times when I'm really tired and I blink a whole lot. There are times when, there, depending on where I'm positioned, the air is blowing into my face, so I blink a lot. There, there, there are so many things. My eyelashes tend to get into my eyes quite frequently. So, I'd end up blinking a lot then too. Don't want to put my hand in my face if I'm out on the road a lot because, you know, my, my hands go various places and, you know, pink eye, germs, COVID, anything, you know. <laughs> so, I could end up blinking a lot while we're talking. Does that mean that I am uninterested? I don't think so. Not for me, anyway. But this is what the professionals say, right? Now, pupil size is something else that comes into play. Do I pay attention to the size of an individual's pupil when I'm talking with them? Never. I cannot say there has ever been a time when I have paid attention to that. But pupil size can be a very subtle nonverbal communication signal. No, if you can determine what my pupil size is at any given time, good for you. While light levels in the environment can control pupil dilation, sometimes emotions can also cause small changes in pupil size. As an example, bedroom eyes. Now, this is used to describe the look someone gives when they're attracted to another person. Highly dilated eyes, for example, can indicate that a person is interested or even aroused. Who would have thunk it? Dilated eyes. <laughs> Blinking a lot. Who pays attention to eyes that closely? No, I... Seven seven three seven eight nine stew. Seven seven three seven eight nine seven eight three nine. I I want to know how many people pay attention to some of these things, and I'd love to know some of the stories behind the moment when you were paying attention to these things. What was it that you saw, and how did you get confirmation of that thing that you saw? The mouth is another thing. Now, if you're from the Caribbean or know people from the Caribbean, you know that we use our mouths to do a myriad of things. We may use our mouths to point. Yeah, don't do not so. Mm-hmm. Over, yeah. That person over there, mm-hmm. you, you point with your lips. It's, it's, it's a thing we do. I don't know if they do it anywhere else. I, I know people from the Caribbean, we do it a lot. <laughs> And uh, if anybody else does it, I think they have learned it from the people in the Caribbean. But of course, I'm going to say that as one from the Caribbean. Now, mouth expressions and movements can also be essential in, in reading body language. As an example, chewing on the bottom lip may indicate that the individual is experiencing feelings of worry, fear, or insecurity. Hmm... Yeah, that look when they, and they bite on the bottom of like that. Covering the mouth may be an effort to be polite if the person is yawning or coughing, but it may also be an attempt to cover up a frown of disapproval. It may also be covering up a sign of, uh, I don't know, fear. Um, really? JC, which part of it is true? What what exactly are you saying is true? Um, one of the what is considered one of the the greatest body language signals is actually a smile. But how exactly do you interpret a smile? Because I know some people. Sometimes I myself, I'm smiling with you. 
And as I'm looking at you and I'm smiling, I'm thinking, where is that truck to run over you right now? That would be the best thing ever at this moment. And I'm smiling and that is my thought. So what exactly are you reading from that smile? I really don't like you. <laughs> so I'm smiling at you. And I'm hoping that being in South Florida where we have a lot of lightning, you're going to get hit like right now. And I'm going to witness it. And that is making me smile some more. <laughs> you know, I, I, what, what do you read from that smile? Now, a smile may be genuine or it may be used to express false happiness, sarcasm, or even cynicism. And I, I, I think sarcasm might be my middle name or something. I, I don't know. Do you see? What, what, what? 773-789, Stu. 773-789-7839. I want you all to, to, to interact with me, you know, because... Ooh, when evaluating body language, pay attention to some of these mouth and lip signals. Pursed lips. The tightening of the lips might be an indicator of distaste, dis disapproval, or distrust. Lip biting. Lip biting and I'm all a lip biting. Y'all know that song? People sometimes bite their lips when they are worried, anxious, or stressed. Or when they're a little bit aroused, ladies. You tend to do this more than us men. But you have that little lip biting thing that conveys a sense of, hey, you know, if you don't have my number yet, you need to have it now. And uh, with having it, you need to be using it to make an arrangement for us to link up or something. That, that lip biting. So there's that. So it's not just the worried, anxious or stressed. That comes with how your eyes are. So for, in my opinion... There has to be a combination of the lip biting and something else. Covering the mouth is what people do when they want to hide an emotional reaction. They might cover their mouths in order to avoid displaying smiles or smirks. Um, slight changes in the mouth can be subtle indicators of what a person is feeling. When the mouth is slightly turned up, it might mean the person is feeling happy or optimistic. On the other hand, a slightly turned down mouth can be an indicator of sadness, disapproval, or even outright grimace, as well as it could be the sign of a stroke. So, <laughs> what are you reading from a person's mouth? And seeing that you're 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 connecting with an individual this way you're looking at their face and what is happening on their faces so if you mean taking eye contact do you see what is happening with their mouths really if that is the focal point hmm and if you're looking at their mouths and moving away from their eyes does it seem like you're uninterested because you're now breaking eye contact <laughs> ah questions 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 we're going to break for <laughs> a, little, a, a little moment. And when we come back, we're going to continue with some body language and gestures as, 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 it, as we find it on verywellmind.com. Uh, call your friends, tell your friends. We're going to jump off Facebook Live also. So that link that is pinned in the comment section, that takes you to kevinstew.com. And I'm encouraging you guys to use that. Come on over because the information continues over there. The questions continue over there. 773-789-7839. You can call, text, WhatsApp, Telegram. Contact me. TC Flex, much love, my brother. Hey, listen. Everybody that's on, on, on Facebook right now, big up TC Flex. Because this guy here was the first person to say it to me. Yo, come go on radio. And he didn't even say it like that. He said, come, be a guest on, on, on my midday show. Come play some tunes. And having never played music on the radio before, he just said, here, deep in, go swim. <laughs> and here I am today. Um, thanks to TC Flex. Flex FM is, is, is 
if you're not locked into Flex FM yet, go ahead, get them a check out because you get all kind of programming going on on Flex FM 24 hours. That's family. TC Flex, big up your startups, big brother. Much love to you. Listen, come on over, kevinstew.com. We're going to take a quick break. All right, call everybody. Facebook Live, deuces, come over. Pulsey Media Group, innovative streaming and recording, has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one-minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30-second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one get one free or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30-second video with music or a voiceover or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. AdShare TV, part of Pulsing Media Group. an entire village to raise a child. Hello, I'm Paul Campbell, here to talk about Palace. Peace and Love Academic Scholarship. This nonprofit group supports students facing serious obstacles from entering or continuing their studies, not because the grades are failing, but due to the lack of financial support. Over the past eight years, Palace has awarded 600 scholarships valued at approximately 50.3 million Jamaican dollars or 415,000 US dollars. Together, we must build a better future for our children. Please visit www.palace1.org and make your donation to brighten the future of a deserving child. Palace Preserving young minds for posterity. Imagine having our own Caribbean center. Imagine a museum highlighting our history and the contributions of Caribbean people to the world. Imagine being able to visit and learn about the islands we call home in a place where our kids can see and feel their cultural heritage. You can make this vision come to life. Help us create this first of its kind space that all Caribbean people can be proud of. Your contribution to Island Space Caribbean Museum will help this dream come true. Visit islandspacefl.org slash GoFundMe. Visit islandspacefl.org slash GoFundMe. Visit islandspacefl.org slash GoFundMe and donate today. Yes, my people. Check out I Red Funks on Reggae Global Radio. Every Saturday at 8 p.m. with Kev Stew, we all give you a pre life. Brand new! Good for you! Kick it like a ball if you don't see a dance hall. You hear that? It's Christine representing for DJ Kevin. You see me, I say, I don't know the boss. You see me, I say, DJ Kevin's two on the night shift radio show. Yo, it at the thing, turn up the thing loud. Whoa! DJ Kevin's two at the heart of a champion! Never underestimate, just choose him. The silver line will end the dark clouds. DJ Kevin's to believe in, and that's no doubt. Salute the night shift with a show up the sin to start it up. Love it.
no necesito llenarte de flores uh, oh, 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 Para que llenes mis días de colores Solo necesito que tú me acalores uh, oh, 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 Y así sé que se irán todos mis temores Tuviera que apostar a uh, oh, oh, oh. Lo daría todo y más sin pensar Porque eres lo mejor que me podía pasar a uh, oh, oh, oh. Créeme que no te dejaría escapar Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the broadcast. The sound of Balaguero. The track is called Eres. Yeah, man, you are. You can fill in the blanks. Nuestro amor no se corta como cadenas A diario se alimenta, se sirve como cena If you're just tuning in, it's a real talk on the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew Tonight, this moment, this segment, I want to say thank you to my segment sponsor Althea Thank you very much. Althea SU is a licensed massage therapist operating out of Broad County. But not just Broad County. South Palm Beach County and North Miami Deed. Yeah man, she comes to you bringing her table, her oil and over 20 years massage therapy experience. Give her a call 954-655-9000. That's 954-655-9000. You can also email her at theolate at att.net As an added bonus Just know Althea is also a personal trainer So she will put your muscles at ease But she can also put your muscles in pain I suggest you get your muscles worked out And then get them relaxed and massaged out after Yeah man, talk to her She only has one request outside of paying her When she gives you a massage You get off her table when she's done And go sleep somewhere else Yeah man, she gotta go The zone of Balaguer in the background a track called Eres Yeah, not because Kevin no habla espanol doesn't mean that I don't support the music Come on now Good music It doesn't really matter what language it come in It's just good Welcome 1346 Glad you could pop in Alright, so looking at gestures. Now, gestures is one of those things that could get you in trouble depending on where you come from and where you are visiting at the time. Because as 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 oh, for those of you who don't know, we're talking about body language tonight. Those that are that are listening in on any of the affiliates, uh, uh, um NIE radio out of New Jersey or or, or the Foundation Radio Network, Clintonlincy.com are listening in on TuneIn Radio on the night shift to DJ Kevin Stewart from CR7. Anywhere that you're listening in from. You may not be seeing me right now. If you're listening to the podcast tomorrow, <laughs> for example, you're not seeing me. So come to KevinStew.com. We're live on KevinStew.com at 10 p.m. Eastern, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. All right, so gestures. There are some gestures that... You go to some places and you make some gestures that are okay where you come from. Like the, the okay signal, for example. You do that in, in the United States and you're good. 
throughout the Caribbean, pretty much you're good. But you go to some other places and you do that and you wonder why it is people are trying to fight you. Gestures can be the most some of the most direct and obvious body language signals waving pointing uh, using the fingers to indicate numerical amounts are very common and easy ways to understand gestures some gestures may be cultural so giving a thumbs up or a peace sign in another country may have a completely different meaning than it does in the u.s or parts of the caribbean there are even some words that will, but we're looking at gestures. We're doing body language tonight. Um, here are some examples of a few common gestures and their possible meanings. N notice, you, in times like these, it is important to put possible in there. For those of you who want to call in at any point in time, 773-789-STU, 773-789-7839 gets you in touch. Use up the number, call, text, WhatsApp, Telegram. They all work. All right? Jump on it. Don't worry. It's a judgment-free zone. So eh, nobody going to knock you for what you're saying. All right. So a clenched fist. This can indicate anger in some situations or solidarity in, al in others. Now, funny enough, the same situation may require both. If you're on a, let's say, you, you're, you're, you're in a peace rally and you put the fist up, it is really both because there's anger towards those who are causing you to be out there in a peace rally. It could be um, gang violence. It could be communities warring against each other. It could be... Uh, even the, the, the police being unfair <laughs> with how they're, you see they're, they're, they're them policing. Whatever it is, that same fist is just that. It is showing solidarity with those around you on that peace rally and anger towards those who are oppressing. So it is both in that same situation. That's a clenched fist. All right, cool. A thumbs up or a thumbs down, are often used as gestures of approval or disapproval. The OK gesture made by touching the thumb and the index finger in a circle while extending the other three fingers can mean OK or All right. And in some parts of Europe, the same signal is used to imply you are nothing. Like, you're just less than dirt. In some South American countries, the symbol is actually a vulgar gesture. So, you know, those who like to throw up the OK sign, that's a problem. How they again, Julie? The V sign, created by lifting the index and middle finger, separating them to create a V. Yeah, that V sign. Means peace or victory in some countries. In the United States, sorry, in the United Kingdom, Australia, the symbol takes on an offensive meaning when the back of the hand is facing outward. So, depending on how you turn your hand, <laughs> you know, it, it could be offensive. Now, V is not used in sign language, really. Um... So, you can't say that it is sign language that you're doing because V is different when you do it in sign language. Well, it is used in sign language. It, it's V. Yeah. Huh. I kind of forgot that. Forgot my alphabet there for a moment. All right. So, the arms and the legs. I heard something today um, that... And I, I've, I've never heard this before. It was the very first time that I was hearing it. The way a lady crosses her legs could indicate whether or not she's interested in you. So if she crosses her legs and the leg that is crossing, the one that's on top, is pointing toward you, it is 
said to be more of an approval. But if it is crossed away from you, it is more disapproval. Here's my thing. With crossing the legs, if you cross your legs away from an individual, it makes it easier for you to lean into them. So, depending on the space that you're in, you could cross your leg so that it points away, but you're not, it's not a, sig a signal or a symbol of disapproval because you're leaning in. And typically when you're leaning into someone, it indicates that you're interested. So, how does that work? Anyway, we're going to be looking at crossing the arms and legs and, and see what they say about it on Very Well Mind. Now, these can be useful in conveying nonverbal information. Crossing the arms can indicate defensiveness. Well, I typically do it to be comfortable. It's one of those comfortable feelings. You cross your arms and it's kind of comfortable. You know, you're holding yourself. Comfort. Crossing the legs away from uh, another person may indicate dislike or discomfort with that individual. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Other subtle signals, such as expanding the arms widely, may be an attempt to seem larger or more commanding, while keeping the arms close to the body may be an effort to minimize oneself, oneself or withdraw from attention. So small up yourself, kind of a thing. When you are evaluating body language, pay attention to some of the following signals. You ready? You have your notebook out? Cool. Crossed arms might indicate that a person feels defensive, self-protective, or closed off. Albeit, if the arms are crossed because they're relaxing, um, listen to the tone that they have in their voice. Standing with hands placed on the hips can be an indication that a person is ready, to, is, is ready and in control, or it can possibly be a sign of aggressiveness. Or it can just be that they like putting their hands on a hip out of habit. <laughs> uh, clasping the hands behind the back might indicate that a person is feeling bored, anxious, or even angry. I've done that. Rapidly tapping fingers or fidgeting can be a sign that a person is bored, impatient, or frustrated. Crossed legs can indicate that a person is feeling closed off or in need of privacy. They just really want to pee. How about that? <laughs> um, Thirteen forty-seven. Welcome, welcome. Now, how we hold our bodies can also serve as an important part of body language. Um. Wait before before I go on to that. Let's go back to the legs. So crossing the legs could indicate hostility, unfriendliness, anxiety, because it's a closed posture, but could also be discomfort from wanting to pee. So, is the opposite of that saying that you are welcoming and friendly? Because one kind of expects ladies to sit with their legs crossed. So, does that mean that they're being ladylike, or are they being closed off? Because once they sit with their legs wide open, I guess one could say that is quite being welcoming. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many people are going to accept that as a as an indication of an invitation. But um, if the opposite is true, and it's an open posture, then the thought that it, it, it may indicate friendliness and openness and a willingness, I, I guess that works. I, I remember being in primary school, true confession, being in primary school um, with, with the little girls, yes, they, they, they did that when I was in primary school. They would, uh, if they, if they like you, you know, they would, sit in such a way where their legs would be slightly apart and you could kind of see up their dress. And it, 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 looking back at it now, it's just wrong. It really is. But this is what people have been doing for, I guess, time immemorial. Because think of the movie Fatal Attraction. Or was that Basic, in basic Instinct? When um, Sharon Stone was being interrogated 
and she did the crossing and uncrossing of the legs. Remember that? But you, th- you, you check it out. Think of a movie, any movie, where you have one of those scenes where the lady, the female, is being inviting to the male. She does this slight crossing and uncrossing of the legs because I guess it, 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 it gives you that welcoming thing, but the legs are now crossed. So does it say that, well, for a moment there you were welcome, but it's just a, just, just a little teaser. Really and truly they're crossed, so you're not welcome. Oh, ladies, how does that really work? Let's 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 be real about this. Let's talk about this for a moment, ladies. When you are trying to invite someone in, now now let's we're not talking about a total stranger. So here it is. There is someone that you have an interest in. You have gone past the strangers. So you're no longer strangers, you are now acquaintances and you're conveying that message that goes a little bit beyond just being acquaintances. You want to get a little closer and you want to invite that someone to be a little bit closer. Does the crossing and uncrossing of the legs come into play as a part of one of those gestures? Really and truly. Let's be real about it. 773-789 stew. 773-789-7839. Seven seven three seven eight nine seven eight three nine. All right. So, how we hold our bodies can also serve as an important part of body language. The term posture refers to how we hold our bodies as well as the overall physical form of an individual. I I tend to try to keep my posture upright and decent because I. Well, those who know me probably would say that I'm not, but I try to be an upright and decent person. (laughs) Uh, But I digress. Um, Posture can convey a wealth of information about how a person is feeling, as well as hints about personality characteristics, such as whether a person is confident, open, or submissive. Sitting up straight, for example may indicate that a person is focused and paying attention to what is going on. Sitting with a body hunched forward, on the other hand, can imply that the person is bored or indifferent, or they have scoliosis. Yeah, we don't really think about medical conditions with some of these things, do we? Boy, we can be so far off. When you're trying to read body language, try to notice some of the signals that a person's posture can send. Open postures involving keeping the trunk of the body open and exposed. This type of posture indicates friendliness, openness, and willingness. Closed postures involves hiding the trunk of the body, often hunching forward or keeping the arms and legs crossed. This type of posture can be an indicator of hostility, unfriendliness, or could just be anxiety. Now, if you're anxious, it's not necessary that you're hostile or unfriendly. It's just that you're anxious. Now, you know, one of the big things in, in, in recent times was is, is the talk of personal space. And I remember the first time when someone said, boy, you're invading my personal space. And they kind of made the, the, the signal of a line around them. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now, needless to say, I, if my memory serves me correctly, I was just getting to know the person and I was just standing there. I think they walked up to me and then said I was invading their personal space. We became good friends after that, and she was always all up in my personal space after that. So, uh, <laughs> who'd have thunk it? Um, so, personal space. What is personal space? Have you ever just started to feel uncomfortable when someone stands just a little bit too close to you? Yeah, that's invading your personal space. These days, in these times, people are weary of their personal space. The term proxemics 
coined by anthropologist Edward T. Hall, refers to the distance people, between people as they interact. Just as body movements and facial expressions can communicate a great deal of nonverbal communication, so can the physical space between individuals. Hall described four levels of social distance that occur in different situations. You ready for them? All right, first you have intimate distance. This is where you're, it ranges from 6 to 18 inches. This level of physical distance often indicates a closer relationship or greater comfort between individuals. It usually occurs during intimate contact such as hugging, whispering, or touching. So you, you, you maintain that 6 inch to 18 inch distance. About an arm's length. Yeah? Then you have personal distance, which ranges between the 18 inches to 4 feet. Now, physical distance at this level usually occurs between people who are family members or close friends. I don't see how exactly you're close friends and you're standing four feet away, but you're close friends. The closer the people can comfortably stand while interacting can be an indicator of the level of intimacy in their relationship. Now, I have some male friends that stand shoulder to shoulder with me, and I'm cool with that. Now, it doesn't mean that they're closer than any of my relatives. It just means that we're cool like that. Now, you also have social distance, and that ranges from 4 feet to 12 feet. Now, this level of physical distance is often used with individuals who are acquaintances. So, at this point, you're 4 feet away from me. So we don't really know each other and or well, maybe we don't intend to really get to know each other either. With someone you know fairly well, such as a co-worker, someone you see several times a week, you might feel more comfortable interacting at a closer distance. But typically, in cases where you don't know the person very well, such as a postal delivery driver, someone you see once a month, for example, uh, a distance of 10 to 12 feet may feel more comfortable. Now, why exactly you stay in that far? I'm not too sure. If you're, having, if you're actually in conversation, standing four feet apart, having a conversation, you're pretty much shouting at each other. That's what I am thinking. I could be wrong, but hey, that's just my opinion. Then you have public distance. Now, this comes in uh, with a range of 12 to 25 feet. Physical distance at this level is often used in public speaking situations. And of course, I guess you expect to be that far apart. Talking in front of a class full of students or giving a presentation at work are good examples of such situations. It is also important to note that the level of personal distance that individuals need to feel comfortable can vary from culture to culture. Again, in some cultures, you're meeting someone for the first time. It involves getting up close and personal. You're actually hugging. And if you don't hug, then you're being disrespectful. Often, one often cited example is the difference between people from the Latin cultures and those from North America. People from Latin countries tend to feel more comfortable standing closer to one another as they interact, while people from North America, they require that distance. It's, 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 it's really interesting to see someone that is not very versed on cultural interaction in one of these situations. Now, do note, understanding body language can go a long way toward helping you better communicate with others and interpreting what others might be trying to convey. I remember the first time I, I, I met some Hispanic people who became friends. Now, when I was introduced to them, by the time I was leaving their space, it was a hug. And I'm not talking about just the women hugging. I'm talking about men hugging. And, 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 and coming from the Jamaican culture, 
you know, up out of Jamaica, when I was growing up, we were very homophobic in Jamaica. We didn't hug. Um, or if we did, it was very rare that you'd see something like that. Now, here it was, I, I'm interacting with these people from um, Hispanic backgrounds. And this is how I was greeted. And it was kind of weird for me initially. But then it clicked. And it clicked real quick. You're being welcomed into their space. So if you're being hugged, then that's quite an honor. So <laughs> why, why, why are you coming up with these thoughts in your head? Well, I can tell you. It came from being cultured that way. So, while it might be tempting to pick apart signals one by one, it's important to look at the nonverbal signals in, in relation to nonverbal communication, other nonverbal signals, and the situation that you're in at the time. So, pay attention to what individuals are doing paying attention to the situation that you're in don't just take it for granted that whatever it is that is happening that is exactly what is happening look at a bigger picture dissect if you need to and then take it from there we're going to take another break and when we come back now i'm debating whether or not we need to look at body language anymore or actually when we come back to move into our musical therapy i'm gonna look at 30 well we may not get through 30 we're gonna look at some body language cues that indicate relationship problems yeah <laughs> those are always fun so you ought to come back to be a part of that one We'll be right back after these few messages. Call your friends, tell your friends. It's the Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew, Real Talk Night. As we close out the Night Shift week, we'll be right back after these messages. When being in the moment is priceless, consider the ability to share that moment. If you can video it, you can broadcast it. And Pulse E-Media Group has the tools you need. Weddings. Birthdays, funerals, graduations, church services, parties, seminars, you name it. Pulse E-Media Group can provide you with a secure medium controlled by you to broadcast your event. Contact us at www.pulseemediagroup.com for more information. Pulse E-Media Group, when being in the moment is priceless. Greetings and salutations. This is DJ Kevin Stew inviting you to bubble up and simmer down with me in the Saturday Stew right here on Reggae Global Radio. Get ready for the special segment called The Secret Ingredient, where you may hear from your favorite artist or producer. Saturday Stew happens every Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time exclusively on ReggaeGlobalRadio.com, where we get high on reggae. Come on, smile. Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. Yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. Or maybe he's teething. Maybe it's just a phase. Maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Making great music is one thing, sharing it with the world, that's another. Let the professionals at Reggae Global Entertainment help you to another level. Specializing in artist management, booking, public relations and marketing, and promotion. Reggae Global Entertainment can help you with event planning, websites, photography, and video production, press releases, legal services, and graphic design. They can even help you with music production so you can get the sound that you want every time. Call Reggae Global Entertainment at 954-804-8199. That's 804-8199. Or visit them online at reggaeglobalentertainment.com. 
Matthew 28:19 says, "Go ye therefore and teach all nations." With this in mind, and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, the Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links www.dahchurchlinx.com Your links to worship and praise. Yes, yes, yes. A car Montino, I'm making no sense right now. You are locked in to DJ Kevin Stew on the night shift. caught up in it. The Zone of Al Third. The track is called Only When Close. All the feelings I get. It's only when close to you. What a sweet tune. third was my secret ingredient just a couple weeks ago on reggae global radio on the saturday stew yeah that's my broadcast that i put on my dj hat and put on my talk j hat you know it go Speaking of Reggae Global Radio, I want to say thank you to Reggae Global Entertainment for, sp- for sponsoring this segment of the broadcast. Reggae Global Entertainment will take care of your bookings, handle your tour management, your business registration, legal service referrals, music production, marketing and promotion, and so much more. Give them a call, 954-804-8199. That's 954-804-8199 like Or check them out online at globalentertainment.com Tell them DJ Kevin Stew sent you All the 
the feelings I get. It's only, only when close to you. When close to you. The sweaty palms, the nervous twitch, the hair standing on the back of the neck, the blood pressure going up, the nervous twitch of the eyebrows. That feeling that you want to just lock your head into a door jam. Yeah, it went south real fast, didn't it? <laughs> Look at that body language tonight. If you just if you're just tuning in, you still catch the amen. Don't worry about it. And you can always catch a rebroadcast. Go ahead and 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 subscribe to either the podcast, the Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stewart, the YouTube channel of the same name. Of course, you can come back here to kevinstew.com and check out the posts, which have links to both so you check out post it gives you just a little bit of an overview of what that post is about you can you can listen to the podcast right here on kevinstew.com or you can watch the rebroadcast um right here on kevinstew.com all available to you for each post the links are there watch them right there you don't even need to go anywhere and we do so we do ask that you 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 contribute to the ongoing work of kevinstew.com right so there's a little donate button on the website you go ahead and use it as you as you feel fit right you know there's there's no amount no donation too large or too small or too frequent or infrequent we do like the frequent ones of a medium range so <laughs> that works and um of course you can subscribe on the the podcast also you can you can contribute there it's all welcomed all right so body language <laughs> it gets really interesting with individuals in relationships how what their body language say, says and while we'd like to believe that our partner would convey what they're thinking and feeling with words that's not always the case. I know me personally. For a long time, you knew exactly what was going on with me just from my body language because I got upset and I did not speak. Now I'm learning to speak up a little bit more and use my words to express what I'm feeling. And I have found that in doing so, it really helps both the situation and me. And it was one of those things that I picked up when I was doing therapy. And if you've never gone to therapy, if you've never seen a therapist, I recommend that you do. If if you need to be connected with one, I know a few, I can connect you with, with, with one. And, you know, whether or not they take your insurance, I don't know. But I know a few of them. I have only used one. The others are actually acquaintances of mine and a couple of them are friends, actual friends. So they're good people to know. And that's all I'm saying. Now, if you're getting the idea that your significant other wants out, <laughs> they, they're looking for that exit strategy, they're looking for that door. You need to not just be listening to what they say, but looking at what their body is communicating. The truth is, Body language cues paint a much clearer picture of what is actually going on in a relationship than what is spoken. From, And this goes from the way someone stands to the way they hug. Their body language can tell you all kind of things that is going on, what they're thinking, and not necessarily what they're saying. Now... Looking at hands, eyes, feet, even elbows can give you a clue as to what is going on. So here are some of the things that, that some of the experts, I'm not sure what makes these people experts, 
But this is what they said, courtesy of bestlifeonline.com. If their feet point away from you when you talk, that might be a problem. Well, it's either they point away from you or they point towards you in a swinging motion, which basically means that you're getting kicked. Um, I don't know which one is better. If you're worried about the status of your relationship, then look at how your partner sits when the two of you talk. If your partner consistently turns your feet or torso away from you when speaking, they're probably just losing interest in you altogether. And this is what John Rhodes, a clinical hypnotherapist in the UK, says. But you know, it could just be a, a, a UK culture kind of a thing. They may still turn their heads toward you to be polite, but their feet and body are saying what they, that they want to get away from you. If they're biting their lips a lot. Mm. Biting the lip. Again. Not the lip biting animal kind of a thing that is the exciting part. No, 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 no. Try as your partner might. To cover up their real feelings. Their body language is bound to give them away. And though everyone exhibits nervousness in different ways. Washington DC body language expert. Janine Driver. I wonder how you become a body language expert. Anyway, Janine Driver notes that without a doubt, the biting of the lip says that your partner is holding something back. Yeah, they bite the lip because they don't want to say the thing that is coming to their minds. Because they're going to tell you about how many strings make up the fabric that they want to tell you about that makes you up. <sighs> anyway. If your partner is crossing their legs, this is another sign. When you and your partner are having a heated conversation, the last thing you want to see is their legs crossed. Why? Well, psychologist Travis Bradbury, president of Talent Smart in San Diego, who wrote for Entrepreneur, says... This can signal that the person is mentally, emotionally, and physically closed off. He added, it is not intentional, which is why it is so revealing. So they cross their legs and they're closed off. I don't know. No more for you. <laughs> so shop lock, kind of a deal. If... They are faking their smile. Boy, I, I think that is universal. I don't think it, it, it has to be a partner. If they're faking their smile, people in, in happy relationships don't have to fake their enthusiasm. So seeing your partner with a smile that doesn't go all the way up their eyes, yeah, it's usually a good indication that something in a partnership is kind of off. According to Virginia psychotherapist and relationship coach Tony Coleman, you know, if the smile doesn't go all the way to the eyes, you might need to question something. If they're sighing all the time, well, pretty much because you're stressing them out. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's also body language cues in your partner's voice and intonations. And according to Coleman, one vocal indication that something in the relationship is off is when your partner is adding a non audible adding non audible noises like sighs. <sighs> oh boy. I don't think that's quite non audible. I think you can hear that pretty well. And even without the ah oh boy. If there are pauses and silences that didn't used to be an issue, well, if you find those coming into every conversation, that might be an issue. If your partner is leaning away from you when you're together, maybe you need to go brush your teeth. Or put on some deodorant. Or just take a shower. Emotional close closeness is often mirrored by physical closeness. So you want to pay attention to how much space your partner puts between the two of you when you go out to dinner or just relax on the couch. One posture sign is that says that the relationship is not going to last is subtle leaning back away 
from your partner when sitting or standing together? Hmm. If they're making a lot of gestures with their left hand. Now, for all the left-handers out there, I don't know if you naturally make a lot of gestures with your left hand or more gestures with your left hand than your right, but Jan Hargrave, who is a language body language expert, told ABC News that, hey, you know, too many left hand gestures are associated with someone being uncomfortable with what they're having, that what they're saying to you, and rubbing the rubbing of the eye too much with the left hand in the left eye says do not see very clearly what i'm saying because i'm not being fully honest with you i didn't know it it made a difference whether it was the left hand or the right hand that you're doing something with now basically if you notice your spouse starting to use their left hand more and more it's probably time to start questioning those late nights at the office. <laughs> That's funny. Now, my better portion is left-handed. So, should I be concerned? Hmm. I need to go question her about her. I need to go pay attention. The next time we're talking, watch. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. I'm going to see how the... Uh, uh, hand movements go if she's talking to me using her left hand or she's using her right hand if she's rubbing her left eye because she's left-handed and that is the hand that should use to rub anyway you know these things should i be concerned <laughs> now if your part if your partner's pupils don't dilate when they see you it may mean that they're dead or the relationship is dead <laughs> Um, a 2017 study published in the journal Royal Society Open Science found that when you see someone you're sexually attracted to, your eyes give you away almost instantly. That's because dilated pupils are a sign of sexual arousal. So, if you think a lover is losing interest in you physically, just look into their eyes. Their pupils will tell you exactly what you need to know. Well, if you understand how pupils dilate and if you can see that well, you know, well, if you don't recognize how they move, eh, you know, I don't know. Let's say you never get undivided attention. That is something, again, naturally, your significant other is going to look at their phone every now and then. But if you notice that your partner only ever seems to check their notifications when you are talking to them, <laughs> then you might want to have a serious conversation about where the relationship is going. If your partner is always on their cell phone looking at YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and they may be more focused on what is going on over there than in the relationship. This explains, uh, is explained, as, as explained by Katie, this kind, a licensed massage, um, sorry, not massage, but marriage and family therapist and owner of Wisdom Within Counseling. Um, she is located in Connecticut. Now, if your partner is not making eye contact, I think that is a clear sign of something is going on. You don't have to be staring at your partner 24 7 for there to be a definite connection but according to this kind if your partner is never making eye contact with you that could be a troubling sign when people avoid eye, eye contact it could it can mean that they're lying or disconnected emotionally if they're making an uncomfortable amount of eye contact here it is that remember we were talking about this earlier well, that says something else. Though a lack of eye contact can signal that a relationship is, is, is heading in the wrong direction, too much eye contact could signal the very same thing. It is 
common knowledge that disinterested people will look in any other direction for something or someone more interesting. Body language expert Stephen Keel explained to The Insider, since we know looking away will be interpreted as rude, people overcompensate by making too much eye contact. What are you looking for? Now, if someone is physically far away from you, and, and you know, as a couple, I, I've had a couple of those nights where you could fit a truck on the bed between us. <laughs> I've, I've had a couple of those. And, um, you know, you, you're, you're always told not to go to bed angry and that kind of a thing. It doesn't always work. And sometimes you're not angry, but you just don't want to touch that person. And so you could park the vehicle, the family vehicle, on the bed between the two of you, that much space. Ali Craig, an international consultant, explained to the insider, the distance someone keeps between you and them says a lot. Ali says, people who like each other generally don't have problems being in close physical proximity to each other. If you dislike someone, however, you are less likely to position yourself very close to them. You'll keep a safe, quote-unquote safe, amount of space between the two of you. When people enter a relationship, they naturally start being more vulnerable with their partner. Opening their stomach area to someone is a growing sign of trust, says David Barber, a co-founder of wellness company Vivo Life Sciences in Sherman Oaks, California. So if, if, if someone starts crossing their arms to cover their stomach, it may be a signal that the things are amiss in the relationship if someone starts avoiding such intimacy and starts a process of shelling up so to speak covering up guarding themselves it may be just an unconscious reaction to losing feelings they no longer desire that relationship or that intimacy we see it in our animal friends too when when they lay like or dogs when they lay on their backs and open up, you know, rub my tummy. That's that's a loving gesture. It it shows trust. So you have the pursing of the licking of of the lips that is next on this list. And again, you know, when it comes to the mouth <sighs> Things can get really hairy. When you confront your significant other about the status of your relationship, pay attention not just to what they say, but what their mouth does when they say it. Pursed lips can indicate extreme anxiety, withholding information, and withholding aggression. Body language expert Patty Wood, author of Snap, Making the Most of First Impressions, Body Language, and Charisma, wrote on her website additionally when you are nervous your mouth becomes dry and you lick your lips and swallow as you struggle to find the right words that you want to say hmm as i talk to you as i go through this broadcast my mouth becomes dry and i lick my lips and sometimes i struggle to find the right words to say. Does that mean that our relationship is waning? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's really hard to tell sometimes. And sometimes the, the best thing to do is just to ask the question. You know, where do we stand? If your partner is using their pockets to hide their hands. That could be another sign. It is possible, and somewhat likely they say, that something is being hidden from you when your partner is putting their hands in their pockets a lot. It is said that liars tend to keep their hands hidden and still. 
Wood noted on her website that when people are trying to hide their true feelings or the truth, they put their hands in their pockets. They clench them together or they hold them behind their backs. Well, it's not your hand that has the information that you're trying to hide. So, well, why is it that you're going to hide your hands? Why do people do the things that they do, that we do? You know, it's, it's, huh, it's just one of those interesting things. Here's one that is interesting. And pats on the back. Though patting on the back is uh, comforting in times of distress, they're the last thing anyone wants from a person who is supposed to be their romantic partner. And they're never a good sign body language wise. If your partner begins to pat you on the back during a hug, it immediately desexualizes it. If you get a pat on the back from your partner, it just means that <laughs> you're not teammates anymore. <laughs> that is so interesting. And now that I think about it, how many pats on the back have I gotten? Well, I've been tapped on the back because my back was turned when we were in bed. That's different, right? It's not the same thing. Yeah, I don't think that's the same thing. I think that, that that's something else. Um, just a couple more before I jump into musical therapy. Did you know that touching the throat indicates that someone is keeping something from another person? But why would that be an indicator? Well, apparently the throat is a gateway for words, so making it one of the most vulnerable parts of the body. So if, as they're talking to you, they're kind of covering their throat, uh, you know, they might be hiding something. Mm. You ever hug your partner and their elbows stay locked? Kind of like keeping their arms between the two of you kind of a deal apparently it says that they're trying to make as little contact with you as possible now hmm, that might be one that you really want to pay attention to because you hug your partner and they're putting up their hands, keeping distance between you. Yeah, something is up. But if they're singing songs of melodies to you, love sweet loving songs. Then that is something different. Was right, so good to Jumping into musical therapy as we close out this night shift week. Yeah. Kicking us off with a little Ian Sweetness. My voice it was right, so Track called She Fell in Love. You know, this is the McNeil Trucking Sponsored segment. Yep. With McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands. Full of tenderness, excuse me. 
just wanna keep you safe and warm This is on a George Prophet I wanna take you, take you, take you into That's the title of the track right there Take you in my arms you from the star Now that's love I know you will face the light of our day Pressure is too much to take I know sometimes you're feeling down And you are feeling low But baby, this is something that you should know I just wanna take you into my arms I just wanna keep you safe Son of Lee Kelly, the a track called Wonderful Gift. Think about what love really means. Precious children with eyes fully clean. Ooh, what should we teach them today? Could it be to learn how to pray? Giving thanks and praise to Jehovah. What a wonderful gift, this thing called love Could it be more than blessings from above? Oh yeah, only one way to know Always let your love flow Give thanks and praise and live forever Yeah, yeah, yeah Time is getting short in that we know Don't waste no more time Plant a seed and watch it grow Call on the Father Keep on loving each other You should practice these things forever Yes What a wonderful gift This thing called love Could it be more And blessings only one way to know Always let your love flow Give thanks and praise and live forever Whoa, whoa, whoa. I tried, but it feels like I'm wasting my time Says that he's losing his mind Thinks I got things on the side This is Caitlin Arnold It's called At All as we bone through our musical therapy. It's hard. 
Sonna Ben Linda working out with Fiona. I feel happy the love that you gave. I know, I know that it's called love don't fail me now. But that's true, I've never let you down. I want to give you my love. I can't wait. You don't have to wait too long. I'm waiting. Baby, I'll always be around. For your love, Always do you live for mine? It's one of the real stuff. Representing the DMV area. They wanna live for your love. Daily battles I rise above. Ninja, I live for your love. Christina Alicia working out with Tasha T. It's called Love Liberation. This is what we've come to share. Make everyone know. We will stand in unity. Let Babylon beware. No more will we be used to play the fool and push the toil. We know the strength of harmony. We rise above it all. We're
Top of the hour. Ten more minutes before I bone sign out of here. But you know, I can't close out the night shift week and musical therapy without this big tune that is soon to be released by the one and only. New tune courtesy of Miss Joanna Marie. Her rendition of I Just Want to Be Your Everything. You and me been finding each other for so long. And the feeling that I feel for you is more than strong, boy. Take it from me. If you give a little more than you ask. Hey, Andy Gibb. Move over. about DJ Kevin Stew on the night ship. Hmm, you feel for some stew? Check out Kevin Stew. Yeah. Thank you, Joanna. You are to me and not some puppet on a string. 
news to pass on to everybody. This is Ed Robinson. I'm about to say, could mean the Jack girl loves in need of love. Could change your joy and laughter to tears and pain. It's that love in me of love today. If no other day, Don't today delay. we need to have this love. Send yours in right away. Oh, because. I got you, Sentinel. Yeah, man, powerful lyrics. Good morning, or even friends. Here's your friendly announcer. I have seen. As we look to close out this night shift week, close out musical therapy on this real talk night. I want to thank you each and everyone for locking in, logging on, sharing, and commenting. Your contribution is duly appreciated. loved. do want to encourage you to join me again as I come back next Monday for more Night Shift on Night Shift with the DJ Kevin Stew on KevinStew.com and affiliate stations all over this Saturday 8pm Eastern I'm on with Reggae Global Radio it's a Saturday Stew I'll be doing a special tribute to Toots you don't want to miss that This will be the first anniversary, celebrating the first anniversary of Tootsie's transition. So join me, Reggae Global Radio, 8 p.m. Eastern, on Saturday. As we part company, I encourage you to look out for members of your community. Remember, your community is not development that you live in, but it spreads far and wide. So whether you walk, ride, or drive, take the bus, the plane, the boat, or the train, the people you pass along the way, these are members of your community. Do something good for one of them today because you never know who's going to do something good for you tomorrow. I want to thank McNeil Trucking for sponsoring this segment of the broadcast called Musical Therapy. With McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands. Call them for your removal needs. 954-406-9740. That's 954-406-9740. Tell them you heard about them on Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew. As we get out of here, be good. If you can't be good, be good at it. Good morning, good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world from right here in South Florida. I bid you a good night. Take care of you and yours. Catch you Saturday and Saturday stew on Reggae Global Radio. Peace, love and prosperity to you. Much love. I'm out of here. and salutations one and all you're invited to tune in to the night shift with dj kevin stew it airs on mondays with community and finance tuesdays with healthy love and wednesdays with real talk from 10 p.m to midnight eastern time come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy the night shift with dj kevin stew is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment